untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. Opened tribute to Horobi. Not the best rare. Can be playable. But uh, there's also situations where this can uh, come back to hurt you if the opponent has ninjutsu to use with the tokens. Is one example. Next we have some decent uncommons. Skyblast Samurai has been quite impressive so far. Can usually play it around 5 mana, sometimes even cheaper. And a 4-4 flyer is quite big. Good Buseju, nice 2 for 1 of sorts. Can fetch up a couple lands and then... Buseju ends up being pretty large. The Hot Spring is powerful, but Red Green Modified is just a bit of an underperformer, so I'm not tempted to take it first. There's also Twist and Embrace, it's just an excellent removal spell at common, and there's a few ways to maybe loop it back to play it multiple times. So I think it's between Buseju, Embrace, and then the Samurai, a distant third. So I'm gonna go with the Embrace here to try that out. So this pack has Virus Beetle to maybe go with our first pick. That's just a great common that enables lots of different synergies. There's also Twin Shot Sniper, which is tempting. Uh, it's still pretty early in the draft. So I could take the excellent red uncommon here. Uh, there's also Thousand Face Shadow. Could still pivot into blue-black ninjutsu perhaps. And then the Shadow's excellence. Modern Age would also be great alongside it. So we have a lot of options. I don't think Arrest is part of the discussion here. I would take these other cards before it. Um, yeah, close call. I guess we'll try the Shadow, see if we can maybe draft a sweet ninja deck. And then, yeah, Network Disruptor seems like the perfect follow-up. There's some other great cards like Spirited Companion. Had we gone Twisted Embrace into Virus Beetle... Companion would have been a nice follow-up, as well as maybe the Kami with an artifact and enchantment to go with it already. Had we taken Twin Shot Sniper, then I would have been tempted to maybe take the Dragon Spark Reactor, hope to get an Anvil to end up in a red-black artifact sacrifice deck instead. But given that we took the Ninja, it makes sense to take some early Ninjutsu Enablers, and Natural Disruptor is the best one we can get at common. So we'll take that, and then hopefully pick up some more ninjutsu synergies. Okay, that's another Spirited Companion, which kinda hurts to see. Although Short Circuit is actually pretty... Oh no, never mind, this is not suit up. Yeah, I was gonna say suit up would have been nice for the ninja deck, it's kind of a pump spell. Short Circuit is kind of the awkward removal spell, so I'm not super interested in that one. Um, so yeah, there's no great blue or black. This pack in general is pretty weak outside of Spirited Companion, which I guess I'll take. Could also speculate on Naomi, although maybe not the best with our first couple picks. So yeah, I guess we'll take the Companion and then see where things end up. Yeah, Invoke the Winds, good uh, powerful card, potentially an incentive to go heavy blue, maybe even mono blue. There's also another Modern Age, past one in pack one, or pack two, I believe. So that's another great uh, common that has gone up in value significantly, that I would love to wheel. But I think I'll try Invoke the Winds here. And uh, Tanuki, good green card as well. And then there's the Crab. So basically all blue cards and a Tanuki, that are good leftovers here. So I feel okay taking Invoke. And what's next? So, committed to blue. Ideally we're blue-black, but could still be a slightly different combination. Uh, Guardians of Oboro doesn't shine in blue-black. It's probably the worst color pair for Guardians, unless we end up with a couple reconfigure cards. Um, but in other color pairs, it's more likely that we can actually enable it with maybe a few plus one counters or other reconfigure cards. Um, could go for a Puzzle Maker, it still enables Ninjutsu in a way. Uh, Scrounger seems pretty weak, as it doesn't fly. And maybe not the best synergy with what we have going on. Don't expect to need Artificer too much. So yeah, I guess we'll take the Puzzle Maker. Ooh, wow. That's another very late Network Disruptor. 
Technician would also make the cuts right now, given that we have some early ninjutsu enablers, even if we don't have a ton of artifact synergy. But I think we'll go with the Disruptor here, and then, yeah, Sky Swimmer would also be fine. But now with Double Disruptor and a Thousand Face Shadow, we can highly value any ninjutsu cards we find. And since we got the Disruptor so late, it probably implies that no one else is taking the ninja cards highly. Searchlight Companion, another excellent ninjutsu enabler. So that's going to be the pick. Uh, Kunai can have some neat synergies if you have ways of recurring it out of the graveyard. It can be quite powerful, but probably not what we need right now. Could also speculate on cliffs in case we end up splashing a little bit of red. Could still be blue-red for all we know, although haven't had a great reason to take any red cards. And Skyscraper's not going to fit into our deck as we aren't going to have many modified creatures. So I'll take the Companion. And yeah, ninth pick. Surprised to still see the Skyblast Samurai in the pack. Now we don't have the best setup for it as we have very few enchantments at the moment. Could take a Mirror Shell Crab. Uh, maybe not the best ninjutsu synergy card, but it is just a solid playable, either as a counterspell or a 7-mana creature. Uh, containment Constructs, I guess could have a little bit of synergy if we wield those Modern Age uh, sagas. So it could still be worth it, but don't expect a Modern Age to wield necessarily. I guess we'll take a Kunai... Could speculate on cultivation, but not even all that great. And don't see myself playing anything else. And once again, nothing too exciting. Can maybe take a recover unit in case we're in the blue-eyed vehicles. But at this point I'm really hoping for more ninjutsu cards, which we haven't really seen. At all, basically. But the fact that we got the late disruptor is still kind of a sign. Not getting the Modern Age is also unfortunate, since that's potentially a, a nice blue card. Could try the Cudgels to go with some of our evasive creatures. Another late Crab. So blue seems open. Sadly, a lot of the good blue cards were in the same pack. Let's see what the next pack brings. Oh boy. There's a couple options here. I only have the one copy of the Kami War, so I'm probably forced to take it just for the collection. This is probably the worst possible deck to try and play the Kami War, as we don't have any fixing. If we were base green, then I would be more into it. If we were strictly taking the best card for our deck, it would be probably between Infiltrator and maybe Circuit Mender, which also still kind of synergizes with Ninjutsu if you pick it back up, it still counts as leaving the battlefield to draw a card even if it's a little clunky. But uh, yeah, I'll take the Kami War just for the collection, not passing anything too insane. Ooh, nice. Kaito Shizuki. Well, that's a nice incentive for the blue-black ninja deck. Speaking of ninja, this pack has a lot of good cards. Ambusher would be great to ninjits on turn 2 of a uh, one-drop. Got another Infiltrator, even the Shrine can be an Ninjutsu enabler, but uh, yeah, Kaito it is. There are many secrets I don't know, but not for long. And then I guess another Twisted Embrace will do here. Not seeing any other cheap ninja type cards, so this is still 4 mana removal. Alright, so we're settling nicely into blue-black at this point. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see how deep our blue is, because of course Embrace is double black, so not the easiest to play alongside Invoke the Winds. But maybe we can pick up some fixing, like I would love to get Uncharted Haven later as well. Okay, this is better. Either Ambusher or Prowler is the pick. So we've got a 3-1, can basically give itself lifelink and death touch. Uh, for one turn versus a 3-2 that always has lifelink. Of course, Prowler is a bit better if you just play it on turn 2. If you don't have Ninjutsu. So Prowler is probably the pick, but, you know, Ambusher is not too far behind. Uh, 
And yeah, a Reckoner Raid is awesome. Great one drop, eventually turns into a 2-2 Menace, also a good Ninjutsu enabler. And that might be an incentive to play a few vehicles to give them Menace. But uh, happy to just take the one drop. Next up, not seeing anything too amazing. Again, not super interested in short circuit. Familiar is a two drop, but doesn't particularly synergize with what we've got going on. And probably don't need to prioritize the crab too much. Trespasser is also kind of mediocre. So how many copies of two heavens do I have? I guess I already have the full playset. There's also something to be set for bargain. I guess I'll try the familiar since I don't have a ton of two drops yet. And it can reconfigure onto some of our flyers at the very least. Anchor to reality. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be doing much for us. Even if we did pick up the seven mana vehicle, it's not the best game plan. However, I do like suit up as kind of a combo trick to push our smaller creatures through. And uh, the other option would be a mnemonic sphere, which is also fine as card draw. But kind of like the combo trick here to make sure our smaller creatures can keep attacking. So now I could consider Brute Suit because we have the Reckoner Raid. With one raid, it's probably not incentive enough to play Brute Suit. But if we had like two or three, then a 4 3 with Menace and Vigilance becomes a lot more powerful. So Prototype could help us generate some additional mana. Or we could take another Crab. Which is probably going to be my pick here. Just gives us a bit of late game if we flood out. Death to the Kami. Not my favorite removal spell. As Edict effects tend to be kind of situational. Um, and another Short Circuit. Which, you know, I could take one just to clear a Flyer. That's also late Master's Rebuke and Kami. So green seems kind of open in this direction. Another suit up I'll happily take. Alright, so we didn't take a ton of ninjutsu cards so far, just a Nozumi Prowler basically. So we'd love to pick up a ton more in the final pack. As many as I can get basically. And a brute suit just in case. Sentinel, so we do have a couple vehicles, but Vehicles in general have been underperforming as opposed to sagas, which have been better than expected. Well, we opened one of the worst rares possible, so not gonna take the mirror box, but Assassin's Ink, still solid removal. Even if we don't have a ton of artifacts or enchantments, I guess artifacts we do have quite a few. But uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be three mana for the most part. Lethal Exploit also decent, but even though we do have two Twisted Embrace, so there's an argument for taking the cheaper removal spell. I think our game plan is going to be play cheap creatures backed up by removal that can deal with anything, as opposed to playing a lethal exploit. Ooh, nice. Behold the Unspeakable. It's going to be difficult to pass up, just an excellent blue card in any deck. Although, then again, it is in the same pack as some other goodies, like... Specialist, the great ninjutsu card, and uh, Surge Hacker could also be decent if we end up with a few vehicles. But I think it's still going to be Behold the Unspeakable here. Okay, Silver for Master is exactly what we want. So not going to pass that up. March, another blue rare, but not a very good one. So not too sad to pass that up. And yeah, we'll be on the lookout for more ninjas and rogues. Passing a few naturalists as well, that card's great. How do we feel about Disruption Protocol? Double blue, not the easiest to cast, but if we're planning to play Invoke, I guess it's still feasible to have quite a few artifacts to go around. So I could take Protocol, or I could Rare Drafts Invoke Calamity. Just to fill out the collection. Didn't think I'm too interested in you're already dead since 
we're playing small evasive creatures that don't really want to run into opposing reach creatures or flyers necessarily. Yeah, let's rare draft. Alright, could still really use some more ninjas. Kami can get back a ninja or rogue. Typically don't love this card, but it might still be the pick. Or I can take the Dismal Backwater, which would certainly help with uh, casting Twisted Embrace and Invoke in the same deck. So that might be more important. Still a chance we can wheel Kami, which is the hope here. All right, there's a ninja, and there's also a Reckoner Raid. Silencer, as far as ninjas go, is actually not my favorite one. It's still okay, but you're never really getting a great deal, and we already have quite a bit of removal in our deck. So I think I prefer Reckoner Raid, and then we can maybe play a few vehicles, so they can also gain menace. Okay, Searchlight Companion, I guess. Yeah, we somehow did not end up with a lot of ninjutsu. The few packs that had some were uh, stacked with other good ninja cards. So could take another Brute Suit. My creature count in general is pretty low, but I guess cards like Companion are good at crewing Brute Suit. Could also take Sphere as card draw. So this one's close. Maybe I'll go for a sphere here. Maybe prototype, not sure if I'm playing it. And a Kaito's Pursuit, probably not going to make the cut, but... Another suit up. Well, our deck had a lot of promise, but I don't think it really got there. Just not enough. Ninjutsu cards after getting great enablers in pack one. But we do have some solid removal. Some individually powerful cards like, of course, our Planeswalker, Invoke the Winds. And uh, we'll have to see how many vehicles we end up playing. Got double disruption protocol in the end. Okay, so prototypes and maybe. Cudgels, I think I'm going to put in the maybe pile as well, although it's not a bad mana sink, to be fair. Familiar, if we need more two drops, is probably fine. Short circuits, and maybe. I guess, like, one protocol I could play. We do have double crab as well as counter spells. So, yeah, let's, uh... Build or maybe pile. Seems like familiar is going to make the cut since I don't have a ton of other two drops. Did not end up with any discard effects. The modern age did not wield, didn't get any other copies. Also didn't get the four mana, the koi that can also let you discard when you play an artifact. That's another combo with the construct. So it's basically just a two mana, two one artifact. Probably not that great. And then short circuit, not the best. And then Sentinel might be pretty tricky to crew. So not super hyped about that one. I do like my removal at four. Five drops are powerful. And then double crab. I might cut one of them. So let's say we cut all of these. Mana base, definitely going to be more skewed towards blue. If we want to cast something like Invoke the Winds on curve, our deck would need to have like 15-ish blue sources, which we're not going to get close to if we also want to cast these on curve. Yeah, this is 17 lands, so we're 13 blue, 5 black. Yeah, that's not going to work to cast Twisted Embrace and Ink. So this Invoke the Winds may be too ambitious. Could go like... 11-7. Still going to be very difficult to cast this turn 5, as we did not end up with a Terrarium. Yeah, at least this gives me a chance of casting Ink and Embrace some amount of the time, as well as 
Reckon a raid on one. So maybe Invoke the Winds just doesn't make it. Even though this powerful just seems a little ambitious on the mana base. So this is probably better. 10 blue, 8 black. And then I need to make two more cuts. I'm glad it puts the Sagas in the creature pile. Yeah, Puzzle Makers, not ideal. But it is a good blocker, at the very least. And then our game plan is to win with Flying Creatures or the Evasion on Menace. Uh, Kunai, could see cutting. Protocol. Has a couple artifacts to go with it, but... Not an insane number. Could maybe cut one. And then triple suit up might be one too many. But I still like it to get our smaller creatures through. Plays well with Menace as well. If the opponent tries to double block, we can maybe blow them out. And then Kaito also makes a creature, so it's kind of like having an extra one. And yeah, then got our Crab as a potential 3-drop as well. Brute Suit. I don't mind with double companion to crew it and double reckon array to give it menace. A kunai has additional spot removal. And then 17 land. 17 land might be too many. As we don't have a ton of mana sinks. Or discard outlets or other late game ways of using our mana. Could be a reason to play an extra crab just to have a nice 7 drop if we get to 7 mana. Could still be a reason to play Invoke, even if we don't expect to cast it. Once we get uh, 5 mana, would be more of like a, a 7 or 8 drop in our deck, at which point it may be too expensive. And then there's a Cudgels, which would be a reasonable mana sink to put on our smaller flyers. So I actually don't hate the idea of bronze cudgels in this deck. And then any other vehicles. I guess a Thundersteel Colossus would be okay. Relatively cheap to crew. And uh, comes with haste, so it would play well with the Reckoner Raid that's already in play. So maybe that's the, the pick here, just play one Colossus over cudgels. And then if I were to make one more cut, maybe it's just a land. Could see that. And then maybe still need the extra black for those double black removal spells. So eight, eight blue, seven black, and a dual land. And that seems okay. Pseudop also draws a card. We've got our sphere. So we get to dig a little bit deeper into our deck. Makes it easier to get to seven mana. Yeah, kind of disappointed we don't get to play invoke. But... If I want to play Invoke, I probably have to either have a terrible mana base or give up all the double black removal, which we're probably better off playing the removal. Not too many ninjas, sadly, but uh, hopefully the deck still delivers. Alright, nice opening hand, even if we don't get to play Disruptor on one. Reckon a raid. So at this point, I could just play the master as a two drop. Next one, we can tap down a blocker, get in for two. Another reckon a raid. Okay. Ooh, a thousand faced shadow could be very spicy. So next turn I could ninjutsu that. So if I were to attack with everyone, they block my master, I ninjutsu, pick up disruptor, copy master, and then it turns into a chum block.
At least that's the hope. Even get to ninjutsu for one less mana. All right, awesome. Opponent also blue-black ninjas, potentially. Opponent passes as we draw our Planeswalker. Okay, so they might have some instant speed removal at the ready. Could just play Disruptor, tap their one blocker in case of like a suit up or some other shenanigans and then keep up our own suit up. And then if they don't do anything, we can still play Kaito second main. Yeah, that seems fine. Could also tap down one of their lands. Let's just have the blocker. Alright, Master gets inked. That happens. And then we can play Kaito and Plus. Phases out. Captain hits us for two. Oof, I was afraid of that. A board wipe. Everything minus two, minus two. Perfect answer to this board. Alright, I guess it's time to make a ninja. And then can play Familiar, could play the Kunai as well. Our eyes are everywhere. Or we could keep up Suit Up. Although it's unclear where to even equip it, since if I put it on the Familiar and I reconfigure it, then this would fall off. And the ninja probably wants to be attacking. So I could see leaving up suit up instead. Maybe save a creature from another removal spell. Operative. That's fine. Could tap it down. Kaito probably gonna draw a card. And then... I guess just using Twisted Embrace here might be the best solution, or we can have them block and then suit up. And save the Embrace for later, even if that means potentially missing out on one damage. Our opponent's gonna force the issue. This can draw. And uh, Disruptor is probably fine to just play. I have two removal spells in hand, another combo trick. And a Planeswalker drawing us two cards per turn. So now... Don't really want to suit up into three open mana when they have an apprentice as a blocker. Could move the familiar with reconfigure, although that's pretty mana intensive. So I think we just leave it back, attack with the evasive creatures, see what we draw off Kaito, and then decide. So I could kunai equip my familiar. And then I could take out the apprentice before they get a chance to attack my planeswalker. And that seems okay. And then I still have a ton of tricks to use at instant speed. Okay. 
Our opponent's gonna suit up in response. I guess I can just use the kunai. Get to untap. Attack with the team. And our hand's pretty stacked. Next run we can suit up to close out the game if needed. Kami can die. Alright, sweet. Well, got to see the power of Kaito after an amazing start with our Silver Fur Master and Thousand Face Shadow. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Missing the ninjas, but some nice aggressive one drops. Generous Visitor is not what I wanted to see, however. Disruptor vs. Reckoner Raid. Let's Reckoner Raid first, since I don't have anything to ninjutsu anyway. Yeah, Visitor is kind of a must answer. Opponents get something here. Could have been a pump spell. Alright, Rebuke, but uh, yeah, War 2 is still a thing, so a little bit of a misplay from our opponents. So I'll happily attack and suit up. If not, I reckon a raid. Right, so they seem to have a green combo trick. Arrests, that works. Alright, so we've got our creatures in play, now it's time to leverage our combo trick. I think our opponent might have the Tamyo combo trick making a creature indestructible. So, probably still fine to attack with suit up, although they could double block I suppose when I could just put the familiar on one of my flyers. Yeah, that might be better actually. And look for removal. And then next turn... I guess I could have kept the, uh, the land to double suit up to potentially kill them. But we'll see what happens. Brute suit's not bad either. Well, can start by attacking. Behold seems nice. And at 14, I don't expect to die here, but I'm sure there's combinations that still get there. On the play, this hand's featuring some of our weaker cards, I would say, but still looks keepable. 
Familiar has been okay so far. Does play well on uh, flying creatures, at least. And then turn three. Probably go for Puzzle Maker, scry towards that double black. Disciple, I'll gladly take out. Think we enchant Puzzle Maker if we use the familiar as an equipment later, then the plus one plus one would not be doing a whole lot for us. Casting Twisted Embrace is always scary, because for a second I think I'm gonna kill my own creature with it. Now the drawback of Enchanting Puzzle Maker, of course, is that it's easier to kill than something with Ward. Master's nice. So if they have some sort of deal for damage to tanking creature, I guess that wouldn't even work thanks to Ward and 5 Toughness. Uh, don't have any rogues in play that I can pump if I played main phase. I think the plan is just to attack and then I just play Companion and Disruptor. But I'm gonna see if we need suit up first for some reason. Another Companion. Yeah, that seems fine. More flyers. They've got some sort of instance. Might be a pump spell. Hopefully it's not a sweeper. And then I'm hoping that suit up is enough to get past their one flying or reach creature. Alright, looks like her opponent throws in the towel, maybe they were missing a third color, maybe they had lots of expensive cards or cards that just didn't line up, maybe some sagas that require a creature in play, definitely been there before. Alright, so we're on the draw with a pretty nice opening hand. Reckon raid to combo with our brute suit. And then hopefully we get to Ninjutsu the Thousand Face Shadow at some point. A Roaring Earth on two. Play the familiar. And then we could use an extra island. Alright, no creature to go with the Roaring Earth at least. And seems like a good spot to play the Brute Suit, so next turn we can crew it with the Companion. So we're off to a nice aggressive start. Guardians is a decent blocker. And Roaring Earth is an excellent way to modify it so it can attack. Although, can attack past it with Suit Up if I want to. Although there's probably no real need to do that. You can just play Searchlight Companion, Crew Brute Suits, attack for six, and then try and ignore the Guardians on the ground. Yeah, I think going for Companion is fine here. Bones at 10. And then Shadow maybe picking up the Companion could be a nice combo. Kunai can also go upstairs, so essentially a 3 damage burn spell. Okay. So, Crew Brute Suits. Go to combats. Could get even more aggressive and... Send any familiar. With suit up, we would kill them if they have nothing. Or we could just ninjutsu, which I guess is also pretty good here. And it plays around more counter spells. 
And then I can copy the brute suits. Although, strangely, of course, as a vehicle, it's not going to deal any damage here. So we're learning some quirky interactions with the Thousand Face Shadow. So yeah, going for ninjutsu played around something like Disruption Protocol or the Essence Capture. Crab still could have countered it potentially, as it counters abilities as well. But now we have double brute suits, opponents hopelessly behind on board. Even though we could have gone for lethal using suit up. Story weave. That happens. Yeah, the menace from Reckon Raid cannot be underestimated. And then we'll use a kunai to close out the game here so we don't have to go through the combat step. Even though this is potentially gonna take me longer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Almost a great hand, just missing that swamp. But I do have a mnemonic sphere to draw. So maybe it's still worth keeping. Of course, Reckon Raid does lose a lot of value if we don't play turn one. And we're pretty far from double black for Twisted Embrace, so maybe this is still a mulligan actually. Even though it hurts. On the draw, I think I would keep this. Okay. I wanted swamps and I got them. This end's not great. Um, but probably still gonna keep. And then, is this a game where we're gonna need Thundersteel Colossus at 7? Seems pretty far away. And we were pretty likely to draw at least one island. Opponent off to an aggressive start with the Ronin. There's a Master again. Well, at least I can play my Companion, which plays well with Ninjutsu. Opponent a blue-red artifact deck, and they've got the Wombo Combo. Reactor plus Ronin. So, this is going to be a rough one, if I don't draw blue mana right away. Puzzle Maker, good blocker until we can suit up. And if they take it, I can Ninjutsu. Alright, got my blue mana problem sorted at least. The reactor is still quite menacing. Octopus, not the type of card we want to have uh, uncontested. But let's see here. Yeah, I can probably just attack with both and then suit up again. If they block and if they take it, we can maybe do some fun ninjutsu shenanigans. Okay, so how about, I guess I can Azumi Prowler pick up Companion, give this Death Touch. Then just replay the Companion, that seems better. And then just try and pick up the Companion as many times as possible with Ninjutsu to make more tokens. Alright, so we recovered from our mulligan nicely. Opponent stuck on three lanes with a reactor that they cannot quite activate. I'll take two. They've got their own ninjutsu. The hacker. Card I would have loved to pick up for our deck. So did they find land four now? They did. Okay, Disruptor could always tap down a land. Other thing to plan is attack with all Ninjutsu Master, Replay Companion. And 
and then we're starting to go wide. Suit up can deal a couple extra points of damage. And hopefully that's enough. Still probably fine to block the hacker with a 1-1 token. Steelbreaker is fine. Can just tap it down here. And then I guess hacker would block either Prowler or Master. And then I have to decide if it's worth it to save them with suit up. How close am I to just killing them? Let's say I tap down Steelbreaker, attack with all, they block Prowler. One, two, three, four. Could put them to one. It's probably good enough. And if they block Master, they're just dead. Uh, they block Prowler. So I can put them to one or I can play Puzzle Maker. Probably fine to play Puzzle Maker then. The only potential awkwardness here is if I want to suit up and they keep up Reactor, they could kill my creature in response. But we have enough of a board presence where we can just force them to use Reactor before I have to decide to suit up anything. Second reactor, but they're not going to be able to use them. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Yeah, suit up in this deck has been quite impressive as a comma trick to get our smaller creatures in. Draws a card as well. On the draw with a fine hand. Familiar into one of our three drops. Facing an Exemplar. Do I want to trade? Eh, could be fine. Double Exemplar. Well, I guess never mind. 4-3, that's an aggressive start. I think I pass and need to suit up here. Opponent could try and play around it, they could have some trick, but Ward 2 hopefully is enough. Yeah, the Ward 2 is gonna save us here. And I still have the Subduer, which can tap my stuff down which I don't really appreciate. But uh, Companion can go wide, can play Disruptor as well. And then we can try and block. Don't know if that's better than playing a Puzzle Maker, which they can easily tap down. It's close, let's go Companion. I don't think I'm in a position to attack. Opponent might have a Voltage Surge, for all we know. Could be a Kindled Fury, all sorts of combo tricks. Although I guess they didn't play one last turn. The Poet can get back Enchantments, which I guess also includes the Exemplar. Alright, this is not ideal. If they can just keep doing this over and over, I'm gonna just lose all my creatures, so actually seeing a nice example of the Samurai Warrior Synergy deck, which has been one of the underperforming archetypes, but if you draw well, of course, it can still work. So there's probably no point in me blocking, as next turn they would just do the same and uh, get their Exemplar back. Need to find removal for the Poets. Sadly, all we draw is land so far. Probably still not in a position to race, otherwise they can just attack with everyone. Let's see, if I were to attack with my two 1-1 flyers, they can tap down Puzzle Maker. I mean, maybe I can still get in there, because they're kind of forced to attack alone, and if they don't attack alone, I have reasonable blocks. 
assuming no combo tricks. Okay. Subduer hits me for six. Thunder Steel Colossus we can actually cast next turn. I can move the familiar around. I'm gonna take a big hit next turn once again. Might have to jump with like a searchlight companion, but at the same time I feel like I should be applying a bit of pressure since I gotta get my damage in. Okay, maybe keep companion back, attack with the disruptor, or is it better the other way around? Maybe the other way around is better, so we can replay companion with ninjutsu potentially. And hopefully this still discourages an all-out attack. Although, could go to one. Pretty close to dead. And behold the unspeakable. Yeah, that's not bad. Don't know if it's gonna be good enough. Take six down to two. And then it's Behold over Colossus. Next turn, they don't get to flying anymore. They can still send one large creature. So maybe just again Companion plus Puzzle Maker. And don't need land. Yeah, because if I only kept one blocker back, they could just tap it down and kill me. Still pretty much dead to any trick. But I shouldn't be dead on board. Alright, Seismic Wave will do it. Alright, GG's. Almost got to see Thunder Steel Colossus in action. And yeah, this is a type of situation where it could be good if we need to get those last points of damage in. 7-7 seven, seven, Trample Haste can be unexpected. On the draw. Bit of a slow hand, but still keepable. Puzzle Maker Companion, good at protecting our Planeswalker, as well as enabling it. Just gotta hope our opponent's not off to a blazing start. No 2-drop. That's what we like to see. And then next turn I could already play Kaito and draw. Opponent deciding if they want to maybe kill the Disruptor. Voltage Surge. Yep. In that case, might be better off playing like a Puzzle Maker first. Or my own companion. I guess companion's fine. Puzzle Maker blocks better, but I might want to, like, play my Planeswalker attack to enable the plus one and still leave a blocker back, which works better with the Companion. Could also just play the Puzzle Maker first and then play Kaito. Ogre. Alright. 4 1. Can hit pretty hard. 
Yeah, we could still go for Kaito this turn, thanks to the phase out. And then, uh, yeah, just sends like the flying companion, I guess. Bonus likely to block to prevent ninjutsu. It's still okay. Right, Master is not bad. I guess this wants to channel for one mana. Probably want to keep it as a draw two instead. All right, and then next turn we could play several blockers to protect our planeswalker. And the one one holds off the ogre nicely. All right, so could still attack with my one one. Just to enable the plus, opponent likely to trade for their own 1-1 to free the ogre. And then I have the option of playing Puzzle Maker and Master to block ogre. I think plusing is still better than trying to make ninjas. And then either one of these, I'm happy to trade for Ogre. Right, Kami's Flare deals with Master. Getting close to that Thundersteel Colossus. Born Ogre, and the Twin Shot Sniper finishes off Kaito. Alright, that's too bad. Although they did have to use lots of cards here. So I'll probably draw main phase with Sphere in case we hit a 1 or 2 mana play. Like a familiar. Now my hand still leaves a lot to be desired. And I might want to keep the familiar because we have Thundersteel Colossus, which wants to be crude. Steelbreaker. That happens. Yeah, protocol will be nice to keep up later, but for now, we'll rumble in for seven. Could also try and play defense, which is also reasonable. I think I get the hit for 7 in, and then next turn we can reevaluate if we need to play more passively. If my hand was better, I would be more into playing the control role, but when we've got nothing, I think I try and get in damage while I can. Synthesizer makes a token. Oof, and they hit a Kami's Flare. At least it doesn't kill Familiar, thanks to Ward. Has been actually pretty relevant in this draft. So we'll see how aggressive they get. Opponent gets in for seven. And plays an Artificer. Oh man, would have loved to draw something here. Okay, so I guess we'll just pass, because I don't think I can win this race anymore. But it's a pretty precarious situation. One neat trick we do have available is crewing the Colossus and then modifying the Colossus by reconfiguring the Familiar onto it to deal a few extra points. But um, yeah, not in a position to go for it here, as our opponent has 10 on the way back. Their own Familiar. It doesn't really get any of their creatures past Colossus, except for... Steelbreaker could sacrifice two creatures. 
I hate countering a 2-drop, but at this point it might be necessary for me not to fall behind. I guess Ogre's also an artifact creature, so they actually have quite a few. Alright, Crab potentially lets me attack with Colossus now. Still not without a risk, but kind of like the attack now. Expect them to take it. And maybe next turn we can use the trick of reconfiguring after crewing. We'll see. Well, we played both our 7 drops, so that's the reason to still include them. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Very close game here. After our opponent managed to deal with Kaito. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, and seems acceptable. Probably going for a Brute Suit on three. Companion to crew it, and then keep up a couple instants to interact with the opponents. Do they have the intervention? They do. Nope. I gancho instead. Fair enough. That one we wouldn't even have been able to counter with protocol. Alright, so now we don't have as much pressure as I would have liked before going shields up. And I guess we're also still missing double black for ink, so we're not actually doing a whole lot. At least can keep up my counter spell. And then maybe next turn I can uh, reconfigure. Careful cultivation. Alright, I guess they can have it, and then we just have to draw a black mana for ink. I said black mana for ink. Ooh, reality chip. I don't think we can let that resolve. Although I guess they do have to reconfigure it before it does anything. Just seems like playing with fire, not countering it. Alright, swamp over the top. Crab is not the worst, although still unable to attack. Silver for Master. I guess we could just hard cast, although I prefer to ninjutsu so we can replay companion. Also get some evasive damage in. It's a bit of a staring contest. Colossus were very close to casting as well. This is a weird game. Tanuki worth countering. Hopefully this isn't a brilliant restoration deck from our opponents, because probably can beat it. Oh wow, the Kami actually could pay for it thanks to the double mana. Totally spaced on that. 
Fair enough. At least we can attack with our companions now. And I think I send in the one once to Ninjutsu Prowler. Alright, so that still kind of worked out. And then still waiting for a swamp, or I guess land 7 at this point for Colossus would be decent. Imperial Oath makes a bunch of blockers on the ground, although the fight's gonna be in the skies. If we can ever get there. Opponent gets aggressive. Ninjutsu Adventure on the remaining token. Uh, that's a problem. What are we getting back? The reality chip. Okay, that at least stamps the Kami. So... I get to attack, ninjutsu. Ah, uh, safekeeping. That's what they were holding all along. Could still send both companions. Ninjutsu... One of them. Get in for two, replay companion to make a chumper for the Avenger. Maybe that's not so bad. Bones at six. And now the ink should be able to deal with the Kami. They're probably not in a position to attack. Or just a swamp away from glory. Unless they've got more protection spells in hand, I guess. Opponent's gonna fade our 2 2 flyer. Okay. And then I assume Ink Kami over playing Colossus. And then I can move the familiar onto the companion as well. Should I do that first? I guess so. Okay. Bones at three, and gotta hope this Colossus gets there. But they do have reality chip reconfigured. So, who knows what happens next. Definitely a close game. Yeah, and that makes sense. Opponent was hanging onto a board wipe all along. Which explains why they were being so skittish. Well, uh, Colossus would have been nice if it crewed itself. Question now is, do I still play it? I probably do. Could expose it to removal, but it means I can maybe crew it if I top deck a creature. Or I can wait. I think I still go for it. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. The 
Disciple to gain life. Disruptor would not have been enough to crew it, although would have been able to play both in the same turn. Yeah, this is going to slip away pretty quickly now. Need some serious help off the top. Sunblade Samurai. Suit up. Oof, so close. One point short. If I suit up main phase, is there anything I could draw to get that last point of damage in? I guess another uh, Saga would do it. Don't have any other reconfigure cards that I can think of. And I guess Twisted Embrace would also do it, since I would be plus one power. I'm tempted to go for it now, as opposed to trying to block, which is also an option. Just block, use it as a combo trick, either taking out Disciple or Samurai. But the problem is, opponent also gains two life, they still have a bunch of spells in hand, presumably. So I think this might be my final chance to actually kill them. But yeah, if we don't get there, it's going to be a bit of a waste. Okay, Behold still works. Bones at 1. Next turn they go to 3. At least they don't get any life of Disciple. And this could be a draw 4 situation, as her opponent plays another Imperial Oath. Close game. Scry 3 in this situation, of course, very impactful, which is why Imperial Oath has been such a desired card in draft. Another one life. Twisted Embrace was one card down. Draw 4. Okay, probably start with Sphere. See what we draw. This is going to be such a close battle. A land land. Well, at least our flyer is going to be big. Probably still fine to play the land, even though keeping them for Behold is reasonable. If I embrace a life linker, still scheduled to take 10, but I can hit them for 2, and then next turn the 2 part flyer would be enough. So I think that's the play, even though of course they scry something good to the top as well. Let's see if they found an answer. Circuit Mander gains two. Uh oh. And a Kunai. Is the Kunai gonna deal the finishing blow here? Equipped creature. Oh man, the equipped creature can suffer from summoning sickness though. Oh no. Are we gonna be one damage short again? This one. Can't attack block, activated abilities can be activated. Am I dead next turn? Two blockers. Yeah, looks like we're dead. I guess I can play the kunai and then block and activate it. So I still maybe survive and then Vision of the Unspeakable might be able to get there. So I probably don't play out my land. So yeah, I can block with Disruptor and activate it. So we essentially have four blockers. Although I guess that's still not enough. Well, we'll see if they go for it. 
But oh man, so close, so many times, the gain land making the difference. So if they all out attack, I think I'm dead. Can block three, kill another, take four, and that's Xaxes. Fade my Disruptor, yeah. That's gonna do it. Can put them to one, so close, so close. Every card mattered. GG's. Well, that was a good game of magic. Opponent needed a farewell to reset the board after we almost got there. All right, six wins, still pretty nice. Our deck was good, not great. Could definitely use more ninjutsu. Let's crank some packs. And uh, Life of Toshiro would have been great in our deck as well. Invoke Calamity. Did we end up rare drafting one? But uh, in draft, I would probably go either Visitor or Sky Turtle, pack one, pick one. Farewell. Yeah, that card was a pretty big blowout. Should build a constructed deck around it at some point. Shouldn't be too difficult, just the only card type it doesn't get rid of is Planeswalkers, so seems like a pretty easy deck to figure out. March, reasonable removal too. Samurai is good. Arrests, you know, still a fine card, of course, but maybe not as amazing as I thought it would be at first. Quite a few ways to still kind of get around it, maybe sacrifice your creature. Quite a few disenchants being main decked, so you can still free your creature afterwards. So, pack one, pick one here. Pretty interesting. Could see an argument for both uh, Samurai and March. Iteration, also very powerful, definitely worth first picking. And the Silent Spider, also nice two for one. Modern Age, as I mentioned, a card that has gone up in value steadily. And Boseju, also quite good, as the format tends to be pretty grindy. Big reach creatures are a nice way to deal with all those pesky flyers. So a lot of powerful options here. Okay. But want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.